Hi everyone and welcome to a new video tutorial on pianocareeracademy.com. Today I'm going to show you how to emphasize the melody and play it louder, more expressive than the accompaniment, no matter if we have the melody in the right hand, in the left hand, or if we have the melody and the accompaniment in the same hand. First of all, I want to tell you that the ability of playing with different sound intensities simultaneously has to do with our mental and physical coordination. When you train your imagination, your mind and your muscle memory, your fingers, your arms to play with different sound intensities, you're not simply improving your piano playing skills and your expressiveness, you're also improving your ability to concentrate, your coordination, your reflexes, skills that will be extremely useful in all the areas of your life. First, I'm going to show you how to emphasize the melody if we have to play it with the right hand. I'll begin with a very easy example and then I'm also going to show you more difficult examples. Let's start with Andantino, a charming piece for beginners by Aram Hachaturian. In this piece we have such a lovely accompaniment in the left hand and then the melody begins in the right hand like this. show you how to practice in order to be able to play like this, to play the melody more expressive than these intervals in the left hand which represent the accompaniment. Start by practicing hands separately and learning the accompaniment. You have to make sure that you play these intervals softly, without channeling arm weight, without pressing too deep into the keyboard. However, don't keep your arms into the air like this, tensed, and don't try to create the needed soft sonority by holding your hand like suspended in the air and from this point simply pressing these keys because in this case, yes, the sonority will be soft, what we really need. However, because of the fact that your arm muscles will be tensed, sometimes there will be notes that will not sound, sometimes there will be missing notes because when your arm muscles are not relaxed, it's impossible to make sure that all the keys will have an even sound and that all the keys will be pressed in the needed manner. For this reason, even if you play an accompaniment, you have to make sure that all your arm muscles are relaxed, but you play without applying pressure. You see, now I'm applying pressure into the keyboard. You play without applying this kind of force. You play softly, yet extremely relaxed. And this principle will help you to produce a soft sound, but at the same time, it will allow you to control every movement, making sure that each note will sound clearly and there will be no missing notes. First you have to practice like this, the left hand the accompaniment, making sure that your fingers, your arm muscle get used to these sensations. This is like training. You're training your fingers, you're training your arms to memorize all these sensations. So by playing several times like this, you're already teaching your arm. This is how you have to play when you also have the right hand doing something entirely different. So after the training session for the left hand, let's move to the right hand. When we want to produce a softer sound, we don't have to raise our arm too high. We need to keep our fingers close to the keys, making minimal movements with lots of relaxation. However, when we want our sound to be deeper, more expressive, then we have to take a breath before playing the first note and making sure that we're channeling lots of arm weight into the keyboard, that we're applying pressure into the keys. And uh, also you have to make sure that you're not striking the key, you're not hitting the key, but you're pressing the key. At the same time, as I said, channeling as much arm weight as possible into the depth of the key. So if here, yes, we play to the depth of the key, but really softly. Here, when we play the melody, we have to have the feeling that our fingertips have nails attached that pierce the key and reach its depth, reach the bottom of the key bed. And now we are practicing like this, the right hand, transferring the arm weight from one finger to another pressing into the keys with all the weight coming from our back and our arms. And we have to practice like this several times, again, teaching our muscle memory, all these new sensations, making our fingers, 
our arms, memorize all these gestures. Then, after practicing hands separately after this type of training, it's time to play both hands together. You see the sound difference? Because I'm using different gestures, I'm playing differently. It's a matter of coordination. And coordination can be improved only by practice. The more you practice like this, the more you pay attention to all these things, the better you'll be able to make this sound differentiation. One more thing, if you're a beginner, you won't be able to create such an effect from the very beginning. But you don't have to give up. The more you practice like this, the more you play, the better you'll become at this.